All right, example A asks us to find the area of the given triangle. The triangle is not a right triangle. This is an obtuse triangle. This angle here is obviously significantly greater than 90 degrees. We do know that the base of the actual triangle is 7 units, and the slant height is 5 units. What we don't know is the actual height of the triangle. So we could do base times something, but we don't know what to multiply the base by to get our area, which is base times height over 2, right? So what we need to do is find this dimension over here. We're going to call this x. We need to find the, the length or the, the height of our triangle, the length of this sort of missing side out here that would tell us how tall it is actually from the base of the triangle to the highest point up here. Now what we do have, if we were to sort of sketch in a right angle and then go up to the top of our original triangle shape, we can make a right triangle here. And even though this dimension doesn't really exist in the original triangle, the distance is accurate. It is three units from this end here over to the tip of that triangle if we come down at 90 degrees. So we can form a right triangle here. Let me sort of outline that in pink so it shows up a little better. We can form a right triangle right here. And if we do that, we have two of the three sides of a right triangle. We have three units and we have five units. So we can use our Pythagorean theorem. Five squared equals three squared plus b squared. So we'll just subtract three squared from both sides. Five squared, of course, is 25. And that's equal to, let me go ahead and punch these in, plus b squared. So we'll subtract nine from both sides. Minus nine over here. And we get 16 equals b squared. If we take the square root of that, we get either positive or negative 4. Obviously, this isn't negative 4 centimeters long, or units long, whatever those units are. So we know it's going to be positive 4 units long. So 4 is b. So now we have over here, our side is 4 units. I should have labeled that b. Sorry, I didn't mean to be confusing labeling it x the first time. There we go. So the height of our triangle, then, from here up to the very tip of the triangle is four units. Well, now we can use our formula. Now we can take our base of seven units and multiply it by our height of four units. We get, and then divide by two. So we get area equals seven times four divided by two. Well, seven times four is 28. And 28 divided by two is 14. So our area is 14 units squared. All right, example B. Example B, find the perimeter of the triangle in example A. So here's our triangle in the red from the original example. We need to find the perimeter of that triangle. And we knew the base, and we knew the slant height. So that's two of our three sides. But we need to know the, the dimension of this longest side in order to find the perimeter. We discovered before, if we sort of added three units on here, that we could build a right angle triangle up here. Well, if we went ahead and did that, if we imagine that was the case, then this long side here that we're missing, the side we're missing, would be the same on our sort of imagined right triangle as it was on the original obtuse triangle, right? So if we were to calculate this longest side on our new big right triangle, we'd have the dimension of the longest side on the original triangle because they're the same. That we can do with our Pythagorean theorem. We can't do Pythagorean theorem with 7 and 5 because it only works on a right angle, and this is an obtuse angle. So we have to use this imagined a little bit longer triangle and then find the dimension of that side without changing it. So for the big triangle, our base would be 10, and our uh, side B or side A would be 4. So we're going to have our longest side, which we usually call side C, we're going to have c squared equals 4 squared plus 10 squared. Well, 10 squared is 100, and 4 squared is 16. So c squared equals 116. And that means that c is going to be the square root of 116. 116 square root, eh, about 10 and 3 quarters. So c then is about 10.75 approximately, yeah? So now we can find a perimeter. Our perimeter is going to be 5 units this way, 
and 7 units this way, so 5 plus 7 plus, and then C up here was 10.75, so 10 more units, 10 and 3 quarters units this way. Well, 5 and 7 is 12, plus 10.75 is going to be 22.75 units. All right? Okay, example C. Find the area of a triangle that has a base of length 28 centimeters and a height of 15 centimeters. Well, this one they've given us our, our information we want again. That's good. So we have 28 centimeters this way and a height of 15 centimeters. So all we need to do is use our area formula. Area is 1 half base times height. So it's going to be 1 half of 15 times 28. Now, um, in one of my other lessons, I talked a little bit about how, because this is multiplication here, multiplication is commutative, you can do it in any order you want. We could do base times height and then take half of that, or we could do half of the base times the height, or we could do half of the height times the base. It doesn't matter the order in which we do things. Well, that's kind of nice to know in this instance because half of 15 isn't very clear, and 15 times 28, I don't really want to do in my head, but I can take half of 28 easy because 28 divides by 2, 2 and 8, so we have half of 20 plus half of 8, or 14. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to do 1 half times 28 first. That gives me 14. So then I have 14 times 15. Now, 14 times 10 would be 140, and half of 140 is 70. So that means that 14 times 15 would be 100 and, oh, I'm sorry, 210. I did it in my head, and then I undid it in my head. <laughs> 140 plus 70, 210. So our, our area then is going to be 210 centimeters squared.